Pierre Polyever announced, I'm not the front runner, I'm out. So now, what does that mean for the Tory leadership race? What does all of this mean? Let's find out right now and bring in the press gallery. Bob Fife is the Ottawa Bureau Chief for the Globe and Mail. Stephanie Levis is with the Canadian Press. They've both been rewriting stories in the last hour. We've got two special <laughs> guests. Jamie Ellerton is a conservative strategist and a principal of uh, at Compatis and a former campaign uh, manager. Uh, Jenny Byrne, she returns again. She was working with Pierre Polyever. Jenny, great to have you back. Let Thanks. me start with the journals and we'll swing around to Jamie and Jen because Jenny kind of was on the top of the show as the news broke. Bob, uh, Pierre Polyever out. What do you make of it all? Well, the reason is, why did he leave? Uh, he had a team all together. He, he had booked the Nepean uh, Sportsplex to make his announcement on Sunday. People who had been with him on the weekend said he was raring to go. His wife was sending texts to everybody, I need you to support Pierre. And all of a sudden, he pulls out this afternoon calling John Baird and other uh, senior conservatives, and probably Jenny amongst them, to say, I'm out. That's quite a shock to people. So there's one school of thought. One is that he genuinely realized the implications of a leadership race would have on his family. Um, let's face it, he has a young child, and anybody knows that if you're going to be a leader, you're going to spend most of your time traveling across the country, building support not only in the leadership, but also after, if you become leader. And then the other one is more cynical, which is there's something else here other than what we're being told, that there is something that caused him to decide to pull the plug. That What that is, I'm not sure. Lots of speculation on it. Stephanie Levitt. Well, you know, it'd be really nice to believe, and I attend towards Bob's cynical view, it'd be nice to believe that for <laughs> once we're seeing a man acknowledge the rigors of this on his children and the fact that he is missing out on his kid's life. Because, you know, uh, throughout this leadership race, when women's names have come to the fore, it's always been about, well, they have young families or they have children. And we, we've never asked those same questions about the Pierres, about the Peters. They have young families. The question is, he's always had a young family. His baby you know, is, is only several months old. He did run for re-election. He knew what that looked like. So to, to suggest that suddenly it's become a problem raises a lot of questions about why now, why suddenly now. Jamie Alton, yeah. let me get your view. Uh, what do you make of the suddenness of it and what it does to the race? Yeah, so I think one of the things that people I don't think fully appreciate when you hear the family reason for Pierre is he's actually an Ottawa MP. So he's not used to doing, say, the Vancouver-Ottawa shuffle every week. So even though he's been a member of Parliament since 2004, he's never truly had to live the slog of a life away from your family constantly traveling like anyone else typically does if they don't come from the Ottawa region. So I'm willing to give that reason a lot more credibility and perhaps not be so cynical. But if there are perhaps other things at play here, I have no doubt that that Bob Fife and others in the Ottawa Press Gallery will get to the bottom of it. But at the end of the day, if you are running to be leader of the party, you essentially are giving your life over to this cause. And for a man who is the father of an 18-month-old uh, who's now spent the past six, six to eight weeks on the road kind of getting a taste of what that life was like, I don't find it hard to believe that he's now had some second thoughts and is uh, not running for the job. Uh, Jenny, I mean, it's one or the other, as Bob says. We don't know. He he says it's because of his family. What does it say about Pierre Polyever? The guy wants to be the leader, wants to be the prime minister, has a team, books everything, as Bob says. He goes all the way down the road and then stuns everybody, including his closest advisors. By the way, I'm out. Um, is it just that oh, I didn't realize it? If that's the case, what kind of leader is so indecisive? I don't think it's indecisive at all. I think... Pierre, I, I am proud of the team that he built and the uh, and the uh, uh, the people that he got together and the support that he did. Uh, uh, but to Stephanie's point, uh, we wouldn't be asking the same questions if it was a woman uh, running. So to Jamie's point, uh, uh, Pierre, uh, Pierre, uh, uh, him and his wife Anna, they have an 18-month-old baby. Uh, during the election, uh, Pierre is fortunate enough that he is an Ottawa area MP, as Jamie said. So even though he might have been gone from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., he still got to go home every night. It wasn't like he had to uh, uh, fly to Vancouver or fly to uh, fly to Alberta. And I think that he made the very... Well, I mean, come on, I mean, yeah, come on, he knew that. I mean, he, that, he's been around politics too. I mean, it's a big country okay. and he's a veteran. Yeah, okay, okay, I, I, but, I mean, but... I don't want okay, to use me, to accept the fact that Pierre Paul ever was naive. Okay, Because I okay. don't believe he is. Okay, and okay, he but, made... Okay, but, but, as somebody who's just come back from a maternity leave, let me tell you for real, you don't know how real this stuff is until you're in it. You think it's gonna be fine. You think that you can just go to work in the morning and you can come home and you'll see your baby and then you realize you haven't seen your baby for five days and your baby's completely changed. And maybe that is a legitimate Listen, reason to uh, say how about no. This? I he don't know and I don't wanna speculate anymore. There may be reasons, but l let's get to the implications of this and, and yeah. we'll figure it out. Bob, what are the implications? So with Pierre out for whatever reason, 
What does it mean for the race? Well, I, 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 even with Pierre uh, Polyev in, my view was that uh, I think that Peter McKay would have won this leadership. Now I think it becomes almost a coronation. Unless Ron Ambrose, for sudden, can, somebody can change her mind to come back in, there doesn't seem to be anyone else out there that uh, has the ability to be able to right. stop uh, Peter McKay from winning this leadership. Aaron O'Toole um, has, has potential, but I think he's a long ways from being able to beat Peter McKay now. Jamie Allerton, what's your view? What does this do to the race? Yes, yeah, so this essentially does become an Aaron O'Toole versus Peter McKay race. It's, Peter's been very aggressive. He continues to roll out endorsement after endorsement from caucus members, which help, frankly, means they're going to have MPs organizing on the ground in their ridings to help him get through this. I think you could charitably say that Aaron O'Toole perhaps has learned some of the lessons last time he's gone through this once before and realizes how the rules are and perhaps is applying some of those lessons learned. But I just don't see the groundswell of support and kind of visible support for Aaron O'Toole like you're seeing for Peter McKay and like you were seeing for Pierre. That leads me to believe he's really got a strong shot. So it's not out. Campaigns matter. We're just about to get underway here officially uh, in terms of people declaring their candidacy. But as it looks right now, it's uh, Peter McKay's race. And uh, I think you'll have to find other ways to be tested to make sure that we're choosing the right choice and that Pierre can lead us into the next election. Sorry, uh, Jenny, where, how do you recalibrate this? Man, what a week, right? Now, Sheree out, Ambrose out, now uh, Pierre Polyevra out. Jenny, what does that do to the race? Well, I, I, I agree with Jamie. I think uh, ultimately uh, uh, Peter McKay is the uh, is the front runner. He's been uh, rolling out endorsements. I'm not sure how much endorsements matter. To be honest, it's it's not the old style leadership race where it's a delegated convention and and MPs can uh, can act, can uh, can truly influence uh, where their uh, their ridings go. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Right now, it's it's Peter, it's Aaron, it's some some other. Uh, kind of uh, uh, secondary or also ran candidates. So we'll see what we'll see what happens. All right. Uh, let me just quickly swing around here to the Descari comments. Uh, being gay is a choice. I'm a social conservative. I'm going to roll back access to abortion. Uh, Jamie Ellerton, you were very outspoken about Andrew Scheer on this. Is there a place in the party and in the race for a guy like Descari if he manages to raise the money and get the signatures? Uh, so, like Decoray, no. I think you've seen time and time again in recent elections, if a local candidate had said the things that he said yesterday on your show, Evan, he'd be disqualified and not invited to run. So I don't know how Leoc is going to come down in terms of the views, but I also think in terms of him claiming to be socially conservative and speaking for all social conservatives is actually quite offensive. When you hear people talk about the term pro-family, there's nothing pro-family about throwing a 16-year-old gay kid out on the street because they're gay, and yet that's kind of the, the, the supporters who support these kinds of things. And so I think if you look at where social conservatives are at, Social conservatives who want strong uh, families and want stronger communities, they want a tougher law and order agenda. Uh, I think those things are genuinely social conservative. What we heard yesterday from Richard is just a shock jock looking to generate headlines. And quite frankly, for someone who's made a career of essentially like denigrating others on broadcast, to hear him talk about his own essentially version of uh, Sharia law for Canada was just absolutely absurd. You know, the, the LEOC, as Jamie says, those are the folks organizing the race, right? They set the rules the way they did because they said they wanted a field of serious contenders. They didn't want this to turn into right. a circus sideshow. But there's a secondary part of that rule, right? The candidates have to fill out an application form, and then they all get interviewed. They can be sat down by LEOC and said, let's talk about this, right? So this organizing committee, which is chaired by Lisa Raitt, we know, you know her feelings on so-called, as you were talking about, the last guest, social conservative issues, Dan Nolan. They have a choice before them. If this guy meets the threshold, it is ultimately up to them to decide, does this man deserve the chance to run as leader of the party? But what would that look, do look, for social conservatives? Look, this is a decisive moment for the Conservative Party. They cannot tolerate bigots. That man is a bigot. 100%. And I think that the Conservative Party is going, will, in the end, not allow him to run because he is... Out, I mean, there is a difference between social. You, there's nothing wrong with having social conservatives in, in the in the in the conservative party. They're also in the liberal party, but it's it's not. It's the way you. you these are profoundly personal issues. But this man advocated bigotry against gays and lesbians, and and it's unacceptable in that today's. And I just cannot imagine that the party is going to allow him to run.
All right, uh, I, I got to take a break, but boy, some nods there from Jamie and from others. Uh, let's take a break. Uh, Bob, Stephanie, uh, Jenny, uh, thank you. Jenny and Jamie, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. getting your views.